To be honest, by the end of it all, I'm glad I got COVID. So to start this video, let me just tell you, uh, this video is gonna be about me and my experience. This might teach you something or it might not. So let's move on. I have not always been the super passionate person that you know in these videos or whatever else you've seen me do. I became a passionate person in my late 20s and I still don't really know why. So when I was a teenager and in my early 20s, I didn't care about anything. I didn't have passion for anything. I just wanted to get by. You know, I would do minimum wage jobs and just try to survive. I really didn't have any passion for anything. When I was in my late 20s, that changed. And, you know, I'm not actually really sure why to this day. Now, I went through a number of traumatic experiences in my mid-20s, and I've always thought that that's probably, you know, the case. It was some kind of post-traumatic growth, you know? But I don't really know. Now, why am I bringing this up? Well, whenever you didn't have passion, and then one day you find it, I think I've always been a little bit afraid that I could lose it just as easily. And another theory I had was that I gained passion because I found coding and that that was just my calling. I don't think that's true either because before that I went to college and did the Mickey Mouse classes in college and I found ways to become passionate about those. So when I took the first vaccine, I had my first experience uh, with this. I took it and I remember coming home and thinking, you know, I'm feeling a little off, but I don't feel bad. But I remember sitting down at this computer and thinking, I don't want to make a video. I have an idea for one. I just didn't care. And that's the easiest way for me to put it, that I just didn't care. And that was, you know, concerning to me. But I, you know, figured, hey, I just got the vaccine. A lot of travel was involved. Uh, maybe it's just time to, you know, hit the hay and see what happens tomorrow. And I, you know, came back to my normal passion itself uh, pretty quickly. Now, of course, I was curious. So what I'm pretty certain this was is something called malaise. Now, this might surprise you, but I am not a programmer and medical doctor. So I'm not an expert on malaise, but in researching it, it seemed to fit fairly well into what I had experienced. That it was a sort of weird uneasiness, but it, it made me different in a way. And anyway, I didn't think much of it beyond that until I got COVID. Now, I'll just explain to you what happened when I got COVID. I, it was two weeks ago, Thursday. I started feeling bad in the morning and it started getting worse. I tested myself. I tested positive. I uh, had to make a lot of calls because of that. And then, uh, you know, after a few hours, it was enough that I needed to go ahead and take the rest of the day off. And basically from there, I took Friday off too. And then I got through the weekend. I was prescribed a medication called Paxlovid. And if you've heard of it, that's because it's what Joe Biden took as well. It's an antiviral medication. And I'm not an expert enough to explain how it works, but it does have a known effect of actually having a rebound of COVID. And that did happen to me. So basically what happened was after the first, you know, week in the weekend, I, I felt okay, but I was still taking Paxlovid and I came back to work. And uh, then by Friday, I'd stopped taking Paxlovid and I started feeling bad. So that sucked, but I didn't know it was coming. And then the next week, I kind of went through a similar thing where I wasn't taking anything, but the entire time, I had this malaise going on. And the only way I can really describe it, maybe it's not malaise at all, maybe this is something else, but the passion I normally have for things was taken from me. I, I would sit down at work and I didn't think about things the way I normally did. That I would think, oh, what do I have on my roster? You know, what do I gotta get done? And I would just kind of slowly march through it, not really thinking about the bigger picture, not really thinking about how I'm gonna move forward long-term with what I'm working on. I just didn't really care as much as I normally do. 
I was still perfectly functional, intelligent, and able to work out problems. I just wasn't motivated to. And as a result, I feel like I worked quite a bit more slowly. But I did still get things done. And I feel like I got them done to a level that would be acceptable for the job that I'm in. But it wouldn't allow me to excel the way I normally do. Found the same type of thing in college. I, I, I'm still doing my master's degree. I managed to get through that week and there was an assignment there that was challenging and I managed to get through it. It just wasn't nearly as fun when I got to the end of it. I didn't get that big payoff of, all right, I figured it out. It was more like, all right, good, this is done, I can move on. I would do things like take walks around my neighborhood, which is something that I would have done back when I was younger and not very passionate about anything, but today I don't tend to do it very much. And maybe, you know, that sounds like, gee, maybe you should keep that malaise, and I've thought about that. That um, the other thing I noticed is that I was very much less stressed, and I am a person that is passionate as I am, I struggle with stress quite a bit. And, you know, anybody that wants to help me with that, anybody that knows me that's watching this video, you simply can't. Uh, that's at least what I think I've learned from this experience. That although I was dispassionate, I wasn't passionate about what I was doing, I also wasn't being stressed out about it either. I would get to the end of work days and I would still have energy to do things like walk around the neighborhood. And I was able to just walk away at the end of the day and not feel any kind of guilt or, or just drop work basically, stop thinking about work. That was just something I wish I could figure out how to do long term. Uh, there are things I have that I realize, you know, I'm, when I realize I'm stressed. So I tend to grit my teeth and I, you know, when I started getting to be my old self again, I, I noticed I'm starting to do that again. I'll rub it my, my lip like this, little nervous ticks, you know. Uh, sleep is a big one that during this period of time, I slept amazingly. I always got at least eight hours of sleep when in my normal life, I am lucky to get six. So it got me thinking a little bit, would I be better off this way? Because the health problems that stress has caused me were pretty much alleviated over the course of a few weeks. But at the same time, I wasn't happy like I normally am. I wasn't passionate and that doesn't just go to passionate about solving problems. I wasn't passionate in speaking with others and I wouldn't speak up during meetings when normally I would kind of have been a big participant. And so that was lost, but at the same time I was much less stressed. And that goes back to something that I think I realized about this whole becoming passionate thing is that I'm passionate because I care, but I'm also stressed because I care. So I don't think the two can be separated. I think it's one track or another track that if I don't care, I'm not passionate and I'm not stressed because I don't care. I'm not passionate because I don't care. Uh, not to say I completely didn't care. I wasn't negligent during this period of time or anything. I just didn't have my normal level of passion or as someone stated, that mark energy that they're used to. So, you know, I went through a lot of conversations with people about this, just asking them like, hey, do I sound normal and all that? I'm getting very insecure. But at the end of it, I came back to being myself. You know, uh, last few days, it, I just came back to being the normal me. And I guess having COVID was just a little bit more elongated than having the vaccine. So I guess everything's okay, but I'm, I'm trying to figure out what this all means. And really the truth is I don't think there's anything I can do about it. I think I am the way I am now. I think I'm very passionate and very stressed. And I think I should be okay with that. Uh, I don't think there's any way to really mess with it on my own. I wish that I could put a switch on my head where I could adjust that passion or that level of care, I guess, really is what it is, to make myself care a little bit less at certain times, like when I notice I'm getting too stressed. Because there's times where that's very non-productive, like when I'm tired and I'm not really gonna be able to do much more, but I'm still thinking about it and I can't sleep well. Uh, 
but of course I want it for those big moments in my career and that you know spans solving big problems and and you know architecting coming up with the big ideas uh, but it also spans my relationship with the people I work with and if I don't care about what I do I unfortunately I don't think I will care much about well what I found is that I didn't care as much about anything so I'm happy that I got back to normal and I wouldn't recommend anybody go out licking doorknobs to get COVID, but I will say that I learned a good amount from having it, about myself anyway. And this particular thing that COVID does, a lot of people have words for it, COVID brain, they'll call it uh, memory fog or mental fog. Uh, a lot of people have a word for it now. And it can last quite a bit of time for some people apparently. But I'm glad I went through it because uh, it, one, allowed me to see that I can be functional without being as passionate as I am, although I don't feel like it's in my control anyway. Maybe I should be a little bit more secure knowing that. And also that who you are can really be affected by outside forces. That's another thing that I've kind of picked up from it. So thanks for listening, guys. This is just, again, this is really just about me and an experience I had. If you have any insight into this at all, I am not a medical doctor, so if anybody knows more than I do about this, please leave a comment below. I'd like to know what you know. Have a good night.